I'm happy to be here. Ninayo furaha kuwa hapa. And today I will talk about how to build up our marriage or prepare ourselves for marriage for those who are single. Ninataka kuzungumza jinsi ya kujenga ndoa zetu ama jinsi tunavyoweza kujiandaa kwa kuingia katika ndoa wale ambao hawajaingia katika ndoa. I have gone to different countries and I found that marriage is one big problem for many people. Nimeenda katika mataifa mengi tofauti na kile nimegundua ni kwamba ndoa ina matatizo sana kwa watu wengi. And this gives Satan a foothold. Na hii inampa shetani mwanya. The Satan can attack the spiritual, you know, the spiritual life and the family uh, through marriage. Yaani shetani anaweza basi kupiga vita familia kupitia ndoa. Also we need to know that there are practices about marriage that might not be critical. Na inafaa pia uelewe kwamba kuna mitindo fulani katika ndoa ambayo sio ya kibiblia. For instance, one practice I noticed in Africa or some other countries, the men will eat separately from the wife and the children. Aha, kile ambacho wamekigunua sana katika Afrika ni kwamba mwanaume anaweza kukaa mbali na mkewe na watoto wake. Do you think that's a good idea? Je, unafikiria hilo ni wazo nzuri? Do you think you don't think it's a good idea? But many families do that. Lakini familia nyingi zinafanya hivyo. It's like wives and children are inferior. Sasa unapata mke na watoto wanaishi katika uchochole upweke kabisa. The Bible tells us to love our husband to love your wife as Christ loves the church, right? Mali kuna sema kwamba mwanaume ampende mkewe jinsi vile Kristo Yesu alivyopenda kanisa. So this is one part is we can think about. Kwa hivyo hili ni zoezi ambalo lazima ukalizingatie. Okay. First I want to talk about the difference between male and female. Ya kwanza nataka kuzungumza utofauti uliopo kati ya mume na mke. Now for women, God has created women with a nature of care and love. Katika mwanamke Mungu amemuumba na ule moyo wa kutunza na kujali katika upendo. And God created men with great interest in working, doing things. Na Mungu akamuumba mwanaume akampa nguvu za kufanya kazi na mambo mengine tofauti. Or having projects how to construct something, how to build something. Na wanaume pia wamepewa jukumu la ujenzi, kujenga vitu. So when a woman gets buried, she expects she would like to have the husband care about her. Kwa hivyo mwanamke anapoingia katika ndoa, anatumaini kwamba mumewe atamjali na atafanya kazi chini ya mumewe. And she likes the husband to care about her, listen to her, and support her, and encourage her. Na sasa, we will... Huyu mwanamke anamtaka mumewe amsaidie amtie moyo katika shughuli za kidoa. But for men, marriage very often is like a project. Lakini wanaume wengi ndoa zao ni kama mradi. Now let me explain this. Watanieleze hivi. When a man gets married he expects a woman to, you know, to cook and to wash dishes and have children. Unapata kama mwanaume anapompata mke, anataka mwanamke huyo afanye kazi zote za nyumba, aoshe watoto, apike, aoshe vyombo. Now, I don't know about this culture. Do the men try to chase after the woman and courts her? Uh, to you know, to date her in order to get her interested in a man. Do they do that? Very few. So someone arranged the marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now this is very different from many countries. Sasa hii tofauti sana uki angalia mataifa yale mengine ya kwamba kabla msichana aoe watu wataanza kuchumbiana wachumbiane alafu ndoa itengenezwe huku ukipindi pindi vingi unapata watu wanachukuana tu na kuelewana so before marriage the men and women may not know each other very well right He has given you now one hour, not 40 minutes to teach. 
<laughs> is, is that okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, so what, what I was saying is that men have a... Now, they don't know each other well before they marriage. Is that true? Yeah. Say, say. And I said, you know, and I will use that. Je, mambo haya yanafanyika kwamba mtu anaweza pata msichana na muoe hata kama hawaje viwanda vizuri kabisa inafanyika huko ama haifanyiki inafanyika Now before because women like relationship that's why women care for children and they love the children and care for the husband kwa sababu mwanamke ako na na ako na ule moyo wa uhusiano ndio maana anawatunza watoto ana so for men and women to get married, they truly, oh, will the husband like me, love me, listen to me, care for me? So unapata kwamba katika mwanamke itakuwa ni kama kuota ndoto. Je, huyo mume atanipenda, atanijali, atanishughulikia? Will he be nice to me? Na je, atakuwa mzuri kwangu? How many women are married here? Ni wangapi ambao wameoleka hapa kwa ishara ya mkono? Okay. And then men who are married. Na wanaume wameona. Okay. Okay, let me ask you women here. Hebu nikawaulize swali mimi akina mama. If your husband says to you, I'm so happy to have you as my wife. Je, kama mmeo atakwambia kwamba ninafurahishwa sana na wewe kuwa mume wangu. You have taken care of the whole, take care of the children, take care of me, I'm so happy to have you. Ume wajali watoto, ume jali goma, ume jali mimi kama ume wako, nila nasikia vizuri sana. And if you have any problem, tell me, I'll help you. Na kama uko na katizo lolote, na mimi kusaini. Let me ask you, do you like your husband to talk to you like that? Hebu ni waulizi akina. How many would like your husband to talk to you like that? Ni waulizi akina, munge mipenga. Waume wenu wa waongea hivyo ni wangapi watakuwa na furaha kama mume atakuja akwambie nakupenda nitakutunza wangapi watakuwa na furaha okay everyone everyone let me ask you a second question hebu <laughs> niwaulize swali lingine how many of you that your husband would really say to you i'm so happy to have you i like you i thank you for doing all these things and caring for me hebu niwaulize ni mara ngapi mume wako amerudi nyumbani anakwambia ninakupenda nitakujali kwa sababu umenijali umelinda watoto wangu na mimi nitakupenda zaidi How many of you any one of you your, your husband will say that to you Richard Nini ambaye mwanaume mume wako ameshakwambia hivyo hivyo inua mkono The two customers. Nini watu wawili mmeingia mikono? So your husband said that to you? Yes. Your husband said that to you? Yes. Okay, one. Wonderful. Yeah, I tell you that. Is there one person back there? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this Maureen. <laughs> we are in Maureen. Now, before I continue, I would like Maureen to share before uh, before Washington heard this message and after he heard the message, what difference does it bring to him and to her? Can you come out to share, to encourage the people, how good a marriage would that be if the husband really loves the wife like Christ loves the church? Okay, you can come up here. <laughs> And then he will interpret for you. You can stand up. You can stand up. <laughs> so he's your husband. <laughs> Take this opportunity to She wants to take this opportunity to thank God because of her family and also to thank the 
visitor. The time we knew each other and we got married, every time she would run away from my home to come to her parents when she has a lot of tears from her eyes. <laughs> Because of the situation we were living. It was it was very hard because we didn't have we did we did not know how to stay in marriage and also we were not we had not built up a close relationship with God. So so when my husband, when he met with Pastor Timothy, she started to see a big difference in her marriage. He helped her husband to change his ways which were not good. When he, we, he started to follow the ways of God. Okay, Okay, So when my husband could come home. Uh, he, he started to appreciate the, the job the wife was doing in the house and to build up a, a, a respectful relationship between the wife and the parents, na, na, which was not there. And even right now, everybody, even the parents can appreciate because we are now living a very different life. Yes. <laughs> Even her parents were telling her to, to come back home to her parents, to go back to her parents because the husband was not if the husband does not change, she has to go back to her parents. Yeah, but, but nowadays, they are not telling her to run away from the husband to come back to the parents. <laughs> <laughs> so she's thanking God because her life in marriage has really changed. So that now, after the change, now everything we are doing as a family, God is raising up His hand, and it goes as well. It goes well the way we have planned. And now because of that great change in the life, now the husband can even go outside and do ministry outside, which is a great, a great deal that the Lord has done in our life. And even if he goes out to minister, he is very much okay. So I thank God for Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me ask you, do you want your marriage to be like that? Jenny, you are a leader. You are a leader. You are a leader. Because that's what the Bible teaches. Kwa sababu hicho ndicho ambacho Biblia inafundisha. Ephesians chapter 5 verse uh, 25 to 20 actually start with 21 first. Katika kitabu cha Waefeso sura ya 5 mstari wa 21 hadi mstari wa 22. Waefeso sura ya 5 mstari wa 21 na 22. 
Now there were many husbands who insist the wives you submit to me. Na sasa hapo utapata wanaume wengi wanasema kwamba mwanamke lazima unitii. But I want to say that in this Bible passage it says submit to one and other. Lakini nataka nikwambie wewe mstari unamaanisha kwamba kila mmoja akaniyekee chini ya mwingine. Okay now here I read verse 21 to 22. Submit submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives submit to your own husband as to the Lord. Kunyenyekea kwa mmoja juu ya mmoja kwa neno la Mungu wanawake basi mkawatii wanaume wengi. The Bible does tell wives to submit to the husband, but the center is this submit one to another. Biblia inaposema kwamba mwanamke akamtii mume wake, pia hiyo Biblia inasema kwamba kila mmoja akamtii mwenzake. What does that mean? Hiyo inamaanisha nini? It means that when the wife said, I have a problem, I have a need, the husband will submit to the need and say, I was trying to find a solution. Yaani wakati mke anapomwambia mume niko na hitaji fulani inamaanisha kwamba wewe kama mume lazima kutii ile sauti ya mke wako na uanze kutafuta njia ya kusuluhisha ile tatizo. The Bible doesn't tell the husband to say to the wife you know like to the dog like a dog. Okay, sit. Stand. Do this. Do that. This is not what the Bible teaches us to do. Basi Biblia haifundishi mwanaume kum kum kumweka mke wake awe kama sanamu mwambie ka simama tembea lala inuka biblia haifundishi hivyo the bible teaches that the wife was submit to the husband but his husband will also submit to the wife when he hears she has certain needs and feelings biblia inafundisha kwamba mwanamke akanyenyekee chini ya mume wake lakini pia inafundisha kwamba na wewe mwanaume lazima pia ukanyenyekee And then in verse 25 it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So Christ gave his life for Jesus and the Bible says also the husband should love the wife like that. Basi Yesu alitoa maisha yake kwa ajili ya kanisa. Kwa hivyo wewe kama mume pia uwe tayari kutoa maisha yako kwa ajili ya mke wako. Now we notice when Jesus saw some people they had certain needs and Jesus would listen to them. Yesu alipoona watu wakiwa na mahitaji aliwasikiliza. He would care about the needs and the feeling of the people. Yeye alijali mahitaji ya watu na hata hisia za watu. For instance, Jesus saw the woman who has 12 years bleeding. Kwa mfano, Yesu alimwona mwanamke aliyekuwa na ugonjwa wa kutokwa na damu kwa miaka 12. The woman was unclean according to the law, so she touched Jesus secretly. Mwanamke huyo hakuwa msafi kulingana na sheria, lakini akaguza pindo la kuitwa Yesu kisini. And then she secretly went behind Jesus and touched him and then she was healed. Sasa huyo mwanamke alienda kisiri nyuma ya Kristo Yesu na akaguza nguo yake na akaponywa. But Jesus instead of being harsh on her, Jesus said to her some wonderful words. Lakini badala ya Yesu kuwa mkali kwake akamwambia mambo ya ajabu. Jesus said to her, "Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you." Yesu akamwambia, "Jitie moyo binti." This makes the world feel very happy that Jesus cared about her. You in a manisha kwamba wewe mwanamke alisikia vizuri kwa sababu Yesu amemjali. And if husbands can care about the wives like that, the wife will like it very much. Na basi kama mume utamtunza mkeo hivyo basi mkeo ataishi maisha ya furaha. So Jesus said, take heart, what does that mean? It means don't worry, relax, it's okay. Yes, but anapu mwambia, jitie moyo, anamambia kwa kwa kusiwa na shahu, kusijari mambo yote itakuwa saa. So Jesus was saying, I know you are unhappy, but I'm here for you. 
I will help you, so don't worry about it. Yeah, me yes, but I'm a leader, and you are on a furaha, and keep me for half a quarter, and I'm going to be able to get you to the But, you know, you know, in the real world, very often when a wife said, I'm not happy, oh, I have some problem, and then the husband will say, shut up, sit down, take care of your things, don't talk to me. Basi, katika maisha ya kisasa, mwanamuke akiwa na matatizo wa mamie mwenewe kwa mamini zina furani kwa na hili na hili, mwenewe nea tamiyamaza, tamiyamazia mamie wenye amaza, kaa hapo, chunga watoto, ena upike. Well, the husband may say, I don't want to listen to you all day long, I have something to do. Ama mwanamuna ya sema kwa mamini na keleza kumeichosha, inaya mamamini ya kufanyi. When we talk like that, it's like saying to the woman, you have no importance, you are not important, you are nobody. Unapu mwambia hivyo mkeo, unamwambia kwa mba wewe siyo mtu wa muhimu, ata wewe si mtu wa manufaa katika mwisha ya. If the husband talks to the woman, the wife has said she is nobody. What will happen is, she will really become a very hurt and unhappy wife. Basi wewe mwambia, unapu mwambia mkeo kwa mba siyo mtu wa muhimu, utafanya uyo mke atakuwa na maisha magumu na hata uyo and then if she is hurt and unhappy, she will not be able to take care of the husband wholeheartedly. Now, I, in that in that age, I experienced an infilling of the Holy Spirit Mwaka wa tisini na nane wasi alihisi kujazi wa rumu takatifu. When the evangelist lay hand on me, I felt power like electricity and I felt the great love of God fill my heart. And I cried for a long time. Wakati mwinjilisti alipo mweke ya mkono wakasikia mbubu zina muingia kama umeme akalia kwa kipindi kilifu. And I, after that, I said, I really want to have a close relationship with God. And then I lay in on people and they experience the power of the Holy Spirit. And I can bring them to Jesus or help them to serve God. So I said to God, I thank you that I can experience you like that. And my life can go higher and higher and higher. Kwa hivyo na mambia mungu asante kwa sababu niliwezesha kufamia hivyo na maisha yake ya naendelea kwenda juu na juu za hivyo. And God moved my heart that I really want to fill up my marriage. Na sasa mungu akafanya kazi katika mwe wake hili kwa mba mungu afanya kazi katika mwe wake. Because if I don't have a good marriage, I will not be able to serve God to a high degree. Manake kama hata kuwa na usiano mzuri katika dawa yake, hata kuwa na ule uwepesi wa kufanya kazi ya mungu katika viwango vya juu. So I said sorry to my wife, that was my first wife who has passed away. And I said sorry to her for all things I've done wrong. Na sasa yeye, mke wake wakwanda yule alie kufa, haka anza kumambia samani na uwa msama kwa mamo yote nilo kukose. And I tried to be nice to her as much as I can. Na sasa haka anza kujariku kuwa mwe mzuri kwa ke jinsi anavowezeshu. And then, but later she did pass away because of sickness. Lakini kwa sarabu ya magumbi yule mkeo wa kwanza hakafariki. At first I thought I would not get married. I thought I would just take a suitcase and then go to the mission field and just do mission work. Na akasema kuwa na yeye tena hataki mambo ya kuowa. Yee kazi yake tachukua kitakuwa na kuchukua mkoba waki na kuenda kule kufanya kazi ya umishenari. But God prepared for me a second wife whom I did not chase after. Na sasa mungu nae kumbe amemwanalia mke ama yee hapu mfukuzia, hapu mfuata fuata. I was very careful to seek the will of God. Is this God's will? Alikuwa mwangalimu sana kujiuliza je hae ni mapezi ya mungu. I prayed for 11 months to ask God if this is God will please accomplish it. Aka wongo kwa kipindi cha miezi kumi na mwoya. Aka sema kama hae ni mapezi ya mungu mungu mwenyeo ya kamilishi. And then I said to God, if this is not, not your will, please stop it with your almighty power. And I found that it was really God's will. 
na sasa alikuja akagundua kwamba kwa kweli ni mpango wa Mungu and before I marry her na kabla amuoe i told her akamwambia when i marry you i will love you every day kwa sababu nimekuoa wanitapenda kila siku i will smile with you every day nitakuwa nakutabasamia kila siku i will make you happy nitafanya kuwa wa furaha i will do whatever that will bless you nitafanya chochote kile ambacho ninaweza ili Mungu akufariki that this is me and her naweza kuona picha yake mkeo na yeye and this picture now because there's something there so you don't see it clearly that you can see most of our pictures we hold hands or look at each other or stick to each other picha zake nyingi ambazo anazo ni picha ambazo wameshikana mkono na mke wake wakitabasamiana and this is another picture na picha nyingine ndio ile majamaa wamelala tu wanabarizi in our pictures we always lean against each other our heads stick together na sasa wakipigwa picha wanapigwa picha wakiwa pamoja every day i said to her many times i love you i care about you i want to make you happy kila siku yeye huwa anamwambia nakupenda ningependa nikufanye wishi maisha ya furaha kila wakati and i want to say she really loves me very much na anataka kusema kwamba huyo mkewe anampenda zaidi there were times when we would go to sleep kuna vipindi ambavyo wamelienda kulala i close my eyes and then i open my eyes again yani yeye anapofunga macho yake kulala anapomogola macho and as soon as she was looking at me she was not sleeping she was looking at me na tukana timu la simu na yoyo mwangaye huyu amuhimu leo simu ni shakonanga cha
Mungu mke wake anampa maoni mazuri ya kufanya vizuri katika huduma kama missionary. She cares about the ministry as she lives her ministry. Yaani yeye anajali sana huduma wake ni kana kwamba huduma ule ni wake binafsi. She also teaches and sometimes preaches in my church. Mke wake anawafundisha kanisani na anahubiri kanisani. And I will support her totally also. Na yeye pia anamsaidia kabisa. Whenever she does anything, I will say, wow, good, good job, you're doing good. Yani mke wake hapo fanya kitu na mshukuru, hapo mbefanya vizuri, shikiria hapo. Whenever I notice anything good about her, I will say, you're smart, you're sweet, you're so wonderful. And I will go to a job with Zuri, and I will say, you're a job, you're a job, you're a job. And I made up songs to sing to her. Na anatengeneza nyingu Zuri za kumimbia mkewe. And sometimes I said to her, do you have time this evening? Na wakati nilia na mwuliza, jioni ya leo kuna nafasi. And she would laugh and say, what do you want to do? Na anacheka, mkia wanacheka na mwuliza, unaka nifanyi nini? And then I said, can we go out to have a walk tonight? And I mwambia kie, usiku wa leo tunaweza enga inje tukatebe. And then she was sending message when she went to work and then she sent message. Message, I said, do you know why I'm happy for the whole day? Na sasa usiku wa kwenda matembezi haujafika lakini mkeo ataendelea kumtumia ujumbe kumuuliza unajua kwa nini leo niko na furaha and then I told her because I asked her to go out with me tonight na yeye sasa atamjibu na yeye umefurahi kwa sababu nimesema tunataka kwenda matembezi usiku she always respond to whatever I do for her yani yeye mkewe anaitikia kwa jambo lolote ambalo anamfanyia let me ask you Hebu ni waulize. To love your wife as Christ loved the church doesn't mean you love a little bit. Je, kumpenda mkeo jinsi vile Kristo alivyopenda kanisa kanisa lake, je, inamaanisha kwamba ni kupenda tu kidogo? You just give her some food that's loving her. Yaani tu kupenda chakula ndio mapenzi. Is it just giving her some food? Je, upende ni kupenda tu chakula? You know you give food to the dogs too. You just give food to your wife and that is love. Because God has created women very special and men very special. Each have our own qualities. And the special qualities of women are care and loving. Yani vigezo ya mwanamke ni kutunza na upendo. Na very often the husband might forget how much food is left in the house, but the wife will always remember there's not enough food and she has to prepare food for the children and the husband. Ijapo kuwa mwanaume anaweza kusahau ni chakula kiasi gani kilichobaki kwenye nyumba, lakini mke hawezi kusahau kwa sababu anajua watoto wanahitaji wa kule. And then as we remember our parents usually will say Yes, my mom remember any, many things about me, and she has taken care of me in many, many uh, ways. Na sasa watoto pia watakumbuka wanasema kwamba mama yetu ametutunza vizuri kama tunataka chakula na tupa ametutunza kwa njia nyingi. Do you agree that women are more caring? Do you Do you agree that women are more caring? Je, unakubaliana na yeye kwamba mwanamke ni mtu wa kutunza na kujali zaidi? Now, if the whole world is made up of men only, kama basi dunia nzima ingeungwe ikiwa na wanaume peke yao, there won't be much care. Ina maana kwamba hiyo dunia ingekuwa inataka tu shangala paka la, yaani hakungekuwa na watu wa kuitunza. We are saying in Chinese, watu wanamsema kwenye lugha ya Kichina, three women together is like a marketplace they will be talking together. Three women together, they will be like a marketplace for people talking together. Yaani wanawake wakiwekwa watatu utafikia ni kana kama umefika sokoni kwa sababu ya hivi na story watakazokuwa wakipiga wakicheka. And then three men together they have nothing to say. Wanaume watatu pamoja hawanana na kuzungumza. And when they talk they talk about things, they talk about other things. Na wanaume hata kama wanazungumza wanazungumza tu kuhusu vitu fulani. They don't talk about their own needs or fears. Lakini wanaume hao hawazungumzi kuhusu mahitaji yao na hisia zao. God created women to have deep feelings, strong feelings. Mungu alimuumba mwanamke awe na hisia ambazo ni za nguvu zaidi. 
But some husband says, I don't like my woman to be my wife to be like that. She is too very fierce. Lakini wanaume wanasema mimi sipendi mke wangu akae hivyo kwa sababu yeye ana hisia zaidi za kujalijali watu sana. But I want to say this, if you make your wife happy, the wife will have a lot of joy, a lot of excitement and make the family much more lively. Ya kwamba kama utampenda mkeo, mkeo ataishi maisha ya furaha, atakuwa na msisimko na hata wewe katika familia unapoingia katika nyumba utakuwa na mazingira mazuri ya kukaa kwa sababu nyumba imo upendo. If the family is just men, they will just look at each other and walk by and no one no one's feeling. Basi kwa maisha yako kama maisha itapata ya wanaume peke yao, hakutakuwa na yale maisha ya kuvutia, hakutakuwa na furaha na kila mtu ana atakuwa ameweka sura ya kazi. But when the point that you can see the children will cry around the, uh, around the mother and they like to be with the mother. Lakini sasa kama kwenye nyumba kuna mama kuna watoto utapata hiyo nyumba ina furaha kwa sababu anakuja kucheza na mama au mazungumzo yanakuwa ya furaha. And you make the family really like the family with care and love. Na sasa utafanya hiyo familia itakuwa ya upendo na itakuwa familia ambayo inajali. So can you imagine this world if there are no women You know the men will be not talking much and just doing things and sometimes will be so bored. Sasa hebu ona wazo hili kama ulimwengu wote haungekuwa na kina mama wangekuwa na wanaume peke yao ungekuwa na mazungumzo na hata hiji haita haingekuwa mahali pazuri pa kukaa. But God has made women to have so deep feelings, strong feelings that they will have much more love and hold the families together. You know the mother hold the family together much i i would say much more than the men of course the men would do that too but the woman would hold the family together more ijapo kuwa mwanaume pia anaweza kuleta familia pamoja lakini mama naye anaileta pamoja zaidi kwa hiyo familia ambayo haina mama aliye na upendo hiyo hiyo familia huwa inasambaratika haina ndio mwelekeo now when a woman can care and love At the same time they need care and love. Wakati mke anajali na kutunza, pia huyo mke ni lazima ajali mtu amjali na pia mtu amtunze. When a woman finds that there is no love in a marriage, she will lose, she will feel very lost, she will feel very unhappy and hurt. Wakati basi mwanamke atapata kwamba hakuna upendo katika ndoa, huyo mwanamke ataishi maisha ya uzuni hata waishi katika furaha. I have counseled many couples. Yeye amefanya mashauri katika wanandoa wengi. And when we counsel them and ask them what's happening in the family, any problem. Na sasa anapofanya mashauri, huwa anauliza je, ni nini ambayo inafanyika katika familia? The husband will say no problem. Every day come home to eat and we together and no problem. Mwanaume anasema ah hakuna tatizo, usiku tunakula, asubuhi tunafanya chai, hakuna tatizo. But the woman said there are a lot of problems. Lakini mwanamke akasema jamani, kuna yale matatizo mengi sana. The woman says he doesn't listen to me and when I talk he doesn't understand and when I have problem he doesn't help me. Mke atasema kwamba mimi nita ninapoongea hata hanisikilizi, ninapokuwa nahitaji yeye hanisaidii. So for most men they think I go home every day and there is a good husband. Kwa hivyo wanaume wengi wanafikiria kwamba anapoondoka nyumbani na kurudi inamaanisha kwamba yeye ndiye mume mwema. In order for us to bring out the good points of the wives, when the husband love them and care about them, it will bring out the beauty of the wife. Ya kwamba huyo mke kuonekana kwamba ni mke wa kuvutia, ni mke mzuri, ni we mwanaume kupalilia ule upendo ulio ndani ya mwanamke uonekane. Usipopalilia ule upendo hauwezi kutoka nje na uonekane. Let me tell you because I love my wife. Every time I say I would do something for her, this is how she would laugh. I'm so happy. <laughs> Huyo mke pia ataonyesha upendo zaidi na atajali 
familia na kuitunza familia za sawa sawa. Now for men, men are good for more, are good for projects, construction, doing something you know physical. Wanaume wanafanya vizuri katika kutengeneza miradi, mambo ya ujenzi na shughuli zingine mbalimbali. And so that's how God put us together. The wife will take care of the family, the man will take care of work. Ya kwamba mke ataitunza familia na mwanaume naye ataenda kutafuta kazi afanye. And then if a man has a wife that loves her, loves him, then the man will be very happy working every day. Na sasa mume akiwa na mke anayempenda huyo mume atakuwa na furaha kufanya kazi kila siku. But if a husband doesn't have a wife that loves him, then he will feel oh, life is lonely. Oh, it's just hard work, no fun. Basi mwanaume akiwa na mke ambaye hamjali hampendi, mwanaume atasema haya maisha ni magumu, ingia hii barubi ibolea ngumu. Hasa huyu mwanaume anaishi hana furaha, anaishi maisha magumu mno. But if the husband loves the wife and then the wife, the wife really respond well, the husband will feel like a complete person. He feels very happy at home. Basi mwanaume akiwa na mke ambaye anampenda, ataishi maisha mazuri na atajihisi kwamba sasa yeye ni mtu ambaye amekamilika. And also then it will make the children very happy and they are good examples of good parents at home. Na pia hivyo itafanya eh, familia na watoto pia wakuwe na furaha kwa sababu katika nyumba kuna upendo na kuna furaha. And the children will say the parents have good examples of being Christians at home. Na sasa watoto wataanza kuiga huo mfano kwa sababu wazazi wameonyesha mfano mzuri. But if the husband and wife don't talk to each other and they fight and then the children will say they go to church they serve but then when they go home they fight. Aha basi ukiwa ikiwa ni familia ambayo mume na mke wanapigana alafu Jumapili ikifika wanaenda kanisani watoto wataanza kusema sasa hawa watu vitu vyao ni vibaya. Sasa hizi wako kanisani wakirudi nyumbani itakuwa ni kupigana. So God has a lot of wisdom when in the Bible teaches that men husband loves your wife, love your wife and then wife submit to your husband. Basi maandiko inayo hekima eh, eh, nyingi sana unapo ya soma ya kwa na mme ampele mke na mke na ya kamti mme. Because it's difficult for husbands to love the wife. Kwa sababu ni vigunu mme kumpele mkewe. Now women have a sense of responsibility. She is she's responsible for everything in the home. Ya kwa na mwana mke akona hile dhana ya majukumu. Ye anajukumika kwa majukumu ya yubani. When she sees that the husband is not doing a good job, then she will take over the whole home. Ya kwa mba mke anapoona mme hasukuliki na mambo ya goma, mke huwa anafumilia na kushika yada maitaji yote ya goma. Usually women have a strong sense of responsibility that they take care of the children even when the husband doesn't take care of the children. Ya kwa mba mke anadana kubwa sana ya utunzaji na majukumu. Ijako kuwa mme hasukuliki wa toto, Utapata mke amewashika wale watoto vizuri na kuwashukulikia sawa sawa.